after Lachanel, Grenfell, and Abab Aishak, we need to say sorry. The danger with that is as Richard Millett, lead counsel to the Grenfell Inquiry, says, saying sorry is just trite. What we must say is sorry and it won't happen again. It won't happen again if we get our attitude right, if we have enough resources and if regulation is set up properly. What do I mean by that? Why is it that Quasio and ITV spot things that we seemingly don't? Is it about attitude? That's a big part of the explanation. Although I would say when I talk to frontline staff and operatives, they always tell me with total honesty what's going wrong in the organisation. Why doesn't it pass up the line? Some of that explanation, as the coroner's report in Rochdale shows, is about hopeless IT and mixed messages. Another part of that explanation is that we have in effect running a rationing system. There isn't enough money to do everything and there's a kind of computer says no mentality that takes hold. But we cannot ignore the fact that all the cases being brought up by ITV and Quasio affect black and brown people. We aren't inclusive enough, we don't promote enough people with empathy for the residents that we are catering for. Let's turn to resources. It's worth looking at the original report that Rochdale Council commissioned before they transferred the homes to Rochdale Borough-wide Housing, the Housing Association. That report was very bleak. Round about 2014-2015, the council was projected to run out of money to fix the houses. Transferring to Housing Association made sense because they had greater ability to borrow from the private markets. So when we talk about putting the stock back to the council, the question that arises is where is the money coming from to improve services or even keep them at a reasonable level? The most recent quarterly review by the regulator of social housing shows that we are running 27% behind target on major repairs across England and I think over 60% of housing associations are saying they're delaying repairs due to shortages of materials, cost increases, etc, etc. So we definitely need more resources to come into the sector in order to improve the properties. Yes, we've got to tackle damp and mould on an individual property basis, but look about you. Some of those estates need more fundamental regeneration and we need the cash to do that. Otherwise, we will continually be chasing our tails and responding to individual complaints. Last thing we need is stronger regulation. I went back and looked at the report the government produced to set up the current regime and it is it's a disgrace, people. If you look at the list of priorities, the first priority was to cut the number of quangles, the second priority was to cut costs, and you go through all the priorities, and right at the bottom, the very bottom, do you see a requirement to adequately, yes, adequately, look after the interests of residents. They were the bottom of the pile, they've got to get to the top of the pile. And we need a fairer balance between the lobbying of housing associations and the voice that residents have. Let me just explain what I mean to you by that. This time last year, Eddie Hughes, the then housing minister, passed legislation insisting on smoke alarms in every social home. Just recently, the regulator of social housing said, if you haven't put them in, 
Send us your plan, and if the plan's okay, then that is fine. That's not what the legislation called for. It called for smoke alarms to deal with the 20 deaths every year due to carbon monoxide poisoning, not to mention the additional deaths through fires. October 21, the Ombudsman issued his damp and mould report. Too late to save ALAB, obviously, but only in the last couple of weeks after the coroner's report has the regulator written out to landlords to say, where are you? on dealing with damp and mould and decent homes in general. Now, I understand the legal role of the regulator. I'm not criticising them at all, but we need to change our priorities. From the point of view of regulation, it's tenants at the heart of it, and everything else is significantly less important. You can always sort out the accounts. You can always, as we've demonstrated, find more money, by borrowing or whatever other mechanism, but you cannot, people, bring a life back. And that has to be our priority in the future. Thanks for your attention, and I hope to see you soon.